All right, guys, in this video, I'm going to go over high frame rate mode, HFR, which is basically slow motion. Let's check it out. All right, so the high frame rate mode does have a bunch of settings involved with it. So I want to go over those quickly so you can fully understand what's going on here. So in the menu system under movie one, which is the second tab here, it's page one of 10. You got the HFR settings. OK, that's where you're going to want to go. So you can click in there. And now once you're in there, this is where you choose all your settings for this particular feature. For starters, we had record setting. So this is basically the output format that the slow motion footage is going to be put into for you on the memory card. All right. So depending on your workflow, like depending on what videos, you know, what video format you normally record in, um, theoretically, you're going to want to match that with this setting. So 30p at 50 megabits per second is an option. You also have 24p and you have 60p. So for maximum slow motion, 24p would be the way to go. Uh, most people these days seem to be shooting 30p though. Um, I tend to shoot 24p most of the time. So I'm gonna set it to 24p for maximum slow motion because that's what I tend to use for my workflow anyways. So I'm, again, it depends on your workflow, guys. Now that's gonna give you the maximum slow motion. So if you have the frame rate set to 240 frames per second, that's gonna be equivalent to 10 times slow motion. So it's going to take the 240 frames per second, divide it by 10, and then output it to 24p at 50 meg. So that's going to give you your 10 times slow motion. You know, it makes sense. It's basic math here. 240, you know, divided by 24 equals 10. All right. So your frame rate is how you're actually recording the slow motion footage. So if you have it set to 480 frames per second, guess how much slow-mo you're going to get? That's right. 20. So it's going to be 20 times slow-mo, right? Because it's 24 goes into 480 frames how many times? And it's just going to spread that information out and end up giving you super slow-mo footage. And then you have 960, and that's going to be 40 times slow motion. Now, depending on the frame rate you choose, this also is directly parallel to the quality that you get, okay? So 960 is the worst quality. Um, you know, it's still usable depending on what you want to do with it, but it's definitely not production grade quality in my opinion. 480 is slightly better and 240 is pretty darn excellent. So I recommend 240. That gives you 10 times slow motion and also maximum slow motion quality. So that's what I've been using most of the time. I have plenty of slow motion footage to show you in all the formats though, so you can actually see what it looks like and you'll see that difference in quality. Just in general, I'm just giving you my recommendations here. 240 frames per second is gonna yield you the best quality. All right, <clears throat> now priority setting. Priority setting is Basically, do you want the best quality possible or do you want the longest time possible? If you have it set to best quality possible, you're going to get shorter slow motion footage overall. For example, if you're shooting in 240 frames per second, you're going to get about four seconds of slow motion footage if you have it set to quality priority mode. If you have it set to shoot time priority, you're going to get approximately seven seconds. OK, so that's a big difference in time, you know, four seconds versus seven. It's almost double. So again, I'm still using quality, though. That's more important to me. But depending on your situation, more time might be uh, more important to you. You know, sometimes setting up the stunt or whatever you might be doing for this slow motion purpose, you know, may require more time. And then you can edit the footage down and only use a few seconds of it. But you want to capture more time, you know. So that's what that's about. Now, record timing. This is pretty important here. You got start trigger, end trigger, and end half trigger, okay? I've been using start trigger most of the time. But what this means is when you have the high frame rate mode, you know, when you're using this feature and you have the camera set up, um, like right now, for example, I'm actually going to turn those lights off in the background because they're uh, distracting. Hang on one second. So in here, when you, I'm just showing you what the start trigger and end trigger does. Right now, in order to start shooting in high frame rate mode, you have to press this center button here, okay? So right now is basically when you would adjust your settings. If you go to the function menu, you have a number of settings here you can adjust. I'll go over them in more detail in a minute. But that's what you do when you're in this area. But once you're ready to shoot, you hit this center button. When you're in this mode, you can't do anything. Like none of the feet, none of the buttons work. See how it says this operation is invalid? If you are using start trigger, when I hit the movie record button, it's going to actually use the footage that's recorded from the moment I press the button, like right now, till whenever it runs out or 
until I hit the button again. If you hit the button, the record button, you know, on and off, it's going to start and stop the recording. If you only hit it one time, it's going to record till it's completely full, and then it's going to write to the memory card, okay? So in my case, I actually stopped it a little bit short, and now it's recording the information to the memory card. When you, If you have it set to end trigger, basically what it does is it takes the information that's being buffered, all right? So let me, I got to hit the center button to go back to my settings now. So now I'm back in that high frame rate, record timing. I'm going to go to end trigger, okay? So now end trigger, if I go back, now I have to hit the center button again. All right, so right now it's it's preparing. So it's the the, the buffer is full and it's, it's recording um, slow-mo footage. So when I hit the record button, it's going to record what is already captured in the buffer. So for example, like if I want to capture the footage that I got right now, when I hit record, it's, it's already writing to the memory card. So it captured what was recorded before I hit the movie button. Okay, it's actually, that's the difference between end trigger and start trigger. Start trigger, it starts recording when you hit the button. End trigger, it already loads the information that was previously buffered. Okay, so this is a good way, like, if you're sitting by the camera, right, and you're waiting for your slow motion stunt or whatever the case may be, you basically wait for the stunt to happen, and then boom, you hit record, and it goes back in time and captures the information that way. All right, I know that was a long-winded explanation, but it's pretty confusing if you're not familiar with any of these concepts. So that's the end trigger versus start trigger, okay? And then the half end trigger, basically what that does is it just records half of the amount of data, all right? So it's preparing right now, hang on. All right, so now the buffer is loaded. So when you, let me click this center button here to go back. Okay, now I can go to menu. So then you got record timing end trigger half. So that's going to do the same thing as end trigger, except it's only going to record half the amount of data. So depending on the mode you're in, like I said earlier, if you're in quality priority mode, you have about three to four seconds. So if you do end trigger half, it's only going to record two seconds of the slow motion as opposed to four. If you do end trigger, it's going to record all four seconds, okay? And then start trigger, same deal. You have the ability to record all four seconds, or you can actually hit the record button to start and stop it. It's up to you. So for my purposes, I've been using start trigger. So now that I went over the basic high frame rate mode settings, I wanted to show you some of the other settings you have when in this mode. So if you hit the function button right here, the FN button, that'll bring up this menu. And here's some of the options you have. And there's quite a few. You got white balance you can change, auto I've been using. Dynamic range optimizer, you can go in there and you can you can change some of that and that basically just fills in the shadows as you can see here. That might work for you sometimes if you need it. I'm just leaving it to auto. Let me go back to the function. More importantly, what I wanted to show you here is the exposure mode, the high frame rate exposure mode. So right now I'm using P, which is basically full auto meaning it's going to pick the aperture and shutter speed automatically. Now, if you want to choose high frame rate aperture priority, you can actually adjust your aperture, okay? And, and then that might you might want to do that. You might want to not have the camera do that for you, okay? Shutter speed, same thing. You can adjust the shutter speed manually if you're looking for different effects um, using this feature. And then you have high frame rate manual mode. And this will give you the most power and flexibility. So if I choose manual, for example, now I can actually control the shutter speed, you can see here I'm dialing in the shutter speed, and then the aperture, I control with the dial, all right? So I can dial that in to like F4, so the shutter speed is going to be, let's see, 1 800th of a second, for example, and at F4.5, and like that's, if that's how you want the settings, you can adjust that in here. So it's, it's very powerful in that regard. Now, for my purposes, I've just been using auto mode. It seems to do a great job, and for the most part, I'm not doing any kind of depth of field play or anything like that, so that feature seems to be working great. And you can also adjust the ISO, and currently I'm using auto ISO, and I recommend doing that as well. You can also change your focus area. Now, the focus in this mode is set to continuous, and you can't really change that other than switching it to manual focus, so it's either continuous or manual. Now, I prefer using the center focus area, but you can pick a different focus if you want, okay? And just, you know, like you can do a flexible spot or whatever. But center, this way you know it's in the center, and it seems to work pretty good for this particular feature. Because it's continuous autofocus, it's actually continuously focusing right now. So if I just hold this spinner here, for example, it's going to focus on that. And if I move that away, it's then going to focus on whatever's behind it, which is that screw there, all right? So 
one way to ensure that the focus is accurate, basically what you do is you just set it where you want, like so, and then you hit the middle button here, okay? And now it's in standby mode. So now the focus shouldn't change. It shouldn't change anymore, it should be locked in. But what you can do is you can change the camera to manual focus um, if you want. And then you don't have to worry about the focus drifting or anything like that or changing if you, you know, if you accidentally like hit standby or something, you won't have to worry about the focus changing. So that's an option. Like right now it's in continuous focus. All right. So it's going to move around the focus uh, if it's, if it sees some kind of change. All right. So that's just best practices. You could switch it to manual or you can just set it up like so. Wait for it to lock on. All right. And then you can hit standby and now it's good to go. It's ready to go. So if I hit record, let me spin it. And I'll just hit record. Okay, it's buffering. And now it's writing the data to the memory card because I'm using start trigger. All right, so there it goes. So now you got accurate focus. You got your you know high frame rate slow-mo there. And uh, that's pretty much how it works. Now, I just wanted to show you a few more things quickly in that function menu after this completes. So hang on one second. All right, guys, I know I'm repeating myself a lot, but I really want to drive these uh, points home for those new to this camera system because this the Sonys are kind of confusing, all right? But anyways, I'm in standby mode, okay? So I have to hit the center button here to get out of standby mode. Now I'm out of standby mode. Now I can go back into the function menu. And I wanted to show you a couple of features here. Look at this. You have creative style, so you can actually change that in this mode, all right? So you can jack up to vivid neutral you can use all the different creative styles while using this slow motion mode all right so that's pretty powerful and worth noting so that's why i wanted to show you that and basically this is just how it's going to process the footage for you okay so if you're looking for extra punchy vivid look you can click on vivid etc i'm just leaving it at standard now you also have picture effect this is another basically it's just processing the uh the data for you to give it a certain look so you have the pop look, toy camera look, and then you can scroll right or left to change the looks of these things. All right. And not all the features are available, but there's quite a few. Selective color, you can actually change that depending on what color you want. And you can actually record the slow motion footage using these features. So I can set this to high contrast and then record my slow-mo. Like that's pretty cool. Now a lot of this other stuff's grayed out, illustration mode and whatnot. So I'm just going to leave that off for now. And then down here you have picture profile. Now this is another way to change the way the footage looks, okay? And you got PP1, PP2, all these different features. Your S logs are down here. PP8 and 9, you can see how flat they are. And those are your S logs if you plan on grading your video footage uh, yourself, which is, it's kind of involved. You need a processing, a video processing program and whatnot. But that's where you would select those options, okay? That's what picture um, profile is. Uh, quite different than picture effect, okay? Picture effect and picture profile, two different things. And you also have metering mode here, guys. So I got a quick video up on metering modes. And right now I'm using multi, but depending on your scene, you might want to use a different metering mode for your uh, high frame rate film footage. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just going to leave it like that. So that's about it for high frame rate shooting, guys. I really hope you got what you were looking for. If you have any other questions, be sure to ask them in the comments below. And please enjoy the sample slow-mo footage that I recorded over the past week or so. All right, so here's some slow-mo footage taken at 240 frames per second, slowed down to 24p. It's just a cement mixer doing some work over at my brother's house. Had the, uh, the old burning barrel going, and uh, I was hand-holding here, and you could see how it smooths that out as well. Here's another one zoomed in a bit more, and you could see the, the bellowing of the smoke. It looks really cool in slow motion. I thought. And then here's the heat waves. Um, this is at 480 frames per second. The heat waves looked really awesome, I thought, uh, once the smoke stopped. And here's another one at 960. And now you can see just the difference between 480 and 960 is pretty drastic. And uh, the quality is not quite as good. It zooms in and crops in more. But here's low light. Now you can see here how the uh, noise is a bit pretty, uh, you know, very noticeable, I guess, is the best way to put it. And in the lab, you can also see some of the noise. And I was also, I had the, uh, I had some fluorescent lights on in the ceiling there. So I think that might be part of the reason why you see a little bit of flickering. Sorry about that. This is full speed, regular speed, Jace on the swing. And now here's some slow-mo. 
240. And you can see just from regular speed to 240, it's like 240 really is enough. I mean, depending on what you're doing. And, you know, obviously some stuff's really high speed. But, I mean, a kid on a swing is pretty fast. So you can see 480, how much it slows them down. It's incredible. And uh, the quality's decent on the 480. I mean, it's 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 pretty good, you know. It's usable in some cases for sure. 960 is unfortunately not really that usable in production quality, but um, you know, viewing small, it, it looks pretty good, and um, it really slows it down and tremendously. I mean, just look at them on the swing. And here's a little bit more footage of Chase on the uh, trampoline here. This thing's in rough shape. Uh, it's definitely its last season. So here's 480. So this is about it, guys. I really hope you got what you're looking for in this video. Please feel free to ask questions below. And have a great day. I'll catch up with you later.